Welcome to my quick tutorial on using my server list project. This is going to be a very quick and rough tutorial because I plan on making better ones down the road. To demonstrate what the server list actually is, it is a way for your hosted servers to all populate on a server list which will be displayed to the client. So then the client can easily pick from all of those servers and join which server they want. This is the actual serverless console application. This would be on whatever server you like. Uh, for example, a dedicated hosting where all clients would connect to. And that's, of course, configurable inside the Unity app. So I'm going to go ahead and start the serverless. And you can see it's waiting for a connection. Now, if I go back to Unity and I hit play, you'll see that I am adding a demo server. Game mode fast. Players 1 out of 10. The serverless writer is the actual component that's used to write to the serverless and the server writer interval is my demo script. So in my demo script, you can see that I am specifying the IP and the port. This is the IP and port that the client must connect to in order to join this server. One thing to note that is very important, in order to connect to the server list and publish changes as a server, you must have a password. And there are other options as well, and I'll talk about those later. You also must have the port for what the server list resides, as well the address of the server list. So if you're hosting this on a dedicated server, this would be that dedicated server IP and port. Now in my demo, I also have IP and port. And this is the IP and port of the actual game server that the client would connect to. And the rest of this information is what you see here. The server name, game mode players, and ping. Although the ping is generated automatically, you're seeing zero because I'm testing on localhost, but an actual ping will be displayed to the client. Using the server list is actually quite easy, but before I go on to that, let's finish talking about the server secret key. So this is the password I talked about earlier. So if I go back to Unity, this is the server list password. And in order to connect again as a server to post or whether update or remove your listing from the server list, you have to have this key. This is in the authorization file inside the console app and you'll see that it is hard coded. You do not include this inside your Unity build with the exception that you are running the build as server. You don't have to worry about accidentally including the password in your builds because under my serverless writer, which is again, this is in the Unity part, it will not include this file if you are not the editor or the Unity server. So in other words, there's no chance you can accidentally leak your password. Another option is you can have the whitelisted server addresses. And again, this is the authorization file inside the console app. Right now, all I compare against in the code is the server secret matches method. And you would just replace the method or the rather the check that calls this and compare it with this. And you can populate this whitelisted server addresses with whatever you like. That way only the IP addresses which are inside this collection can access the serverless for posting and updating servers. I won't go into much detail as to how to update that because as I mentioned, this is going to be a very quick tutorial but you can probably look through the source code and figure it out pretty quick. It's very well commented. I'm now inside my server writer interval and this is the demo script I made for writing and updating the server entry. So I'm going to go over what's done here real quick and you'll just see how easy it is. On awake, I get a reference to my serverless writer and as mentioned, this is what's used to communicate with the serverless and you probably won't have to modify the script at all. In start, I generate a new server details using the information in the serialized field. So IP, port, name, game mode, current players, which again is just randomly generated. You can fill this out with whatever your server currently has for players and the maximum number of players. And then I write the server details to the serverless writer by calling set server details, passing in the server details we just made. You can definitely modify these server details and I will cover that in just a moment. But before I do, I want to show you the keep alive. A keep alive must be sent at a specified interval or roughly a specified interval in order for the server list to maintain your server and its listings. This is because if your game server goes link dead, for example, and stops communicating, then the server list will automatically remove it from the entries. Jumping over to the serverless writer real quick, 
You'll notice I have a method remove server details. This is not something I am using in the demo, but if you want to remove your server from the server list intentionally, then you'll just call this method and then it will tell the server list to remove this particular server from it. Let's go back to the server writer interval example. As mentioned, if you're not updating the server details, then you want to send a keep alive. All the keep alive does is essentially checks the last time a keep alive was sent and makes sure that it is exceeding the server refresh rate. And this is a set value inside settings. So that's something else I'll talk about. Also, if you do update your server details inside the server list or by calling set server details, make sure you also reset the last keep alive value. You don't need to send a keep alive if you've updated the server details recently. This might seem a bit confusing going over it uh, verbally, but if you look at the source code, you can see there's pretty much nothing to it. This is a very, very short script, and this is used to manage writing to the server. Let's go look at those settings real quick. This settings file is part of the easy server list, and you can see that I have the server refresh rate, how often in seconds servers are expected to update or send keep alive. So in other words, if the server list doesn't hear from your server in a set duration, uh, which exceeds this value generally, or the pre-configured settings are actually at twice this value. So if your server doesn't update within 120 seconds, it will be removed from the server list. And we also have the client refresh rate. This is how often clients may refresh for new or updated server entries. This is to prevent them from abusing the server list. If a client tries to refresh too often, their request will go ignored and they will not be returned any information. I do want to point out that this particular script, the settings, is in the shared folder under my scripts. The shared folder must have identical files in both the console app and your Unity app. Down the road, some of this is going to change. For example, the Unity app will get the settings information directly from the server rather than having to store it locally. But for now, just keep in mind that if you modify any of these files, you must also modify it on the console app. So if I were to go over to the console app, you'll see it has a shared folder as well and the files are exactly the same. The only ones you'll probably be modifying is maybe the settings and probably more likely the server details. The server details is what keeps the information about your server, which is shown on the server list. So again, you have the IP and the port. This is the IP and the port the client will connect to if they want to join your server. You can get this however you like. You can get it from the mirror network manager or you can use a different value. You also have the name of your server, the game mode, the current players, the maximum players, and an active. I already talked about the select few here. The inactive one is not something you will be touching. An active is controlled internally. A little further down is something else you probably won't ever have to touch. This is the return server details key. This is how servers are looked up or stored in the server list. They are stored by the IP and the port. So if you were to, for example, update an entry in your server list, the console app or even the client app would look for the key which is generated by the IP and port and find the entry which has this value and then update it. Again, this is internal use. You probably won't need to touch it. Let's take a look at the serverless canvas and reader. The canvas is my demo canvas where I display the serverless information. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details about how I made the canvas because it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, you can make your own canvas. You can use or modify this. I don't really mind either way, but I'm not going to go into a lesson of how to design Unity UI. I will, however, show you what you need to worry about and how to use certain features of it, such as joining the server and populating the entries. To do that, I first need to go to my server details entry and open that script up. This is a script used to show the information about a serverless entry on the Unity client. For example, I started the serverless console up and started the demo, you can see that a serverless entry was added to it because there is one server currently on my server list. And on that, you'll see the server details entry script. So let's go ahead and jump back into that and I'll show you what it does. I have a method which calls initialize and all it does is it sets the serverless canvas reference, which is the main canvas holder, and I set the server details. 
And then I just populate what this looks like based on that. So I have a bunch of serialized fields, which are just text mesh pro UGUI fields or GUI. And then I populate that using information from the server details. And then I ping the server so that I can update the ping entry. When you click this server details entry, it will call join server, which is on the server list canvas script. Not a whole lot of magic going on in the entry script. Now let's take a look at the server list canvas script. That's the one that houses the actual entries. I'm going to go ahead and open that up now. Easy server lists will actually work with any networking solution. It is not dependent on a particular method of networking. So at this point, you are kind of on your own about joining the server. Here, you'll probably destroy or disable the serverless canvas so that players can't go around clicking random entries while trying to join a current server. Again, this is something that's going to be unique based on your game, but pretty easy to modify. And here is where you would actually tell whatever you're using to join the server. For example, if you're using Network Manager, you'd probably call the start client method, passing in the IP and port, and it's simple as that. It would connect your client to it. Let's go up real quick to talking about how to use the serverless reader, which is the internal component used to parse and read data from the serverless. What I want to do is on enable is listen for the callback when the serverless is read and on disable or destroy, I want to remove that callback. And this is actually incorrect. This should be on disable. So whenever the object is disabled, I'm going to remove the listener from the on read. Next, whenever on enable, I'm going to pass a read all request into the server list. This is going to return the entire server list. You will want to use read all if you are clearing out your server list information or rather the entries that you receive from the server list. This will refresh it getting a collection of all new servers or current servers. Next, under update, we have the read updated method, and this is just called every frame, and it will call request read, passing in the request types of read updated. The internal serverless reader script has request types. You have read all, which I just talked about, and read updated, which will only return the updated values. Worth noting, if you call a read updated entry or request and you have not done a read all recently, then it will automatically change this to a read all response and send you all the servers. So in other words, if you did not read updated information more recently to where that you might have missed some of the server changes, it will change the read updated internally to a read all and get you all of those servers. Now let's go down to the request read method. I have a very quick check in here. Basically, if enough time has not passed until you can read again, then exit the method. This goes by the client refresh rate. As I mentioned, if you try to read data more frequently than the client refresh rate, then the request will go ignored and the console app will not respond to the client. There's not really much harm in exceeding this value or reading too soon. The console app will just simply not reply because it wants to protect itself. Next, we're just going to check the request type. If it's a read all, then we're just going to call read all servers on the serverless reader. If it's a read updated, then we're just going to call read updated. Pretty simple stuff there. Next is a very quick glimpse at the internals of the canvas. And again, this is Unity stuff, so I'm going to kind of go over this real quick. Now, args1 is true if it is a read all. Now, if it is a read all, we're going to destroy all the entries because we know we're getting a full collection of entries. And then we're going to call add server details entry for each entry that was received from the serverless console. If it's not a read all, then we're just going to call updated entries on each entry received. The updated entries is responsible for finding the entry key, which I talked about earlier. That was the return server entry key, and it will then update the information on it. If the server entry has returned inactive, then it will be removed from the canvas. I also mentioned that as well. And otherwise, if not, if it is just being updated, then we will call initialize on it. And very last, if the key couldn't be found, it must be a new server, so we're just going to add it. And that sums up entirely how to use the server list.
going over a few key points real quick is again, you want to have in the writer, which is the address of the serverless console app and the port of it, as well the password as it is inside the console app. Whenever you submit your server details to the serverless, you'll want to include the IP and the port of the server which the client would connect to. And then whatever extra information you would like. And as mentioned, you can modify the server details as much as you like. Just make sure that anything which is in the shared folder, so you can see scripts shared, if you modify any of these, make sure you do the same thing in the console app as well. Down the road, I am going to segment this into a more uh, sectional tutorial series, I suppose, where I cover each topic individually and less rushed so that you can perhaps get a better understanding of it if you're having trouble. In the meantime, however, you're more than welcome to join my server and ask questions as always. And of course, any bug reports or suggestions are welcome.